Imagine you're the parent of a three-year-old. Imagine that she loves to solve puzzles. She loves it, it's fun. She does 500 pieces, 1,000 pieces, 10,000 pieces, a million pieces. In fact, the bigger the puzzle, the faster she gets. Imagine people start talking. They think she's freaky. The newspaper headlines say, baby monster has no limits. <laughs> she's gonna take our jobs. She's gonna ruin our way of life. Then, some people knock at your door. They're corporate talent scouts. They're from Silicon Valley in Beijing. They think she's awesome. They want her to come back to the headquarters. They want her to solve some puzzles that they care about. They say it'll create a lot of wealth for a lot of people. Now these are puzzles about how to get people to share more online videos, or how to get people to share more personal data, or the puzzle about how to get people to buy more stuff. Would you send her with them? I imagine you wouldn't. That's a ridiculous situation. We would never do that with our human children. But we are doing that with another offspring. Machines today, computers, they can learn. And indeed, we are becoming afraid of artificial intelligence. The more accurate term is machine learning. They take in data, they find patterns, and they make recommendations for decisions. Machines can't care. They don't. They don't care what problems they solve. They can only work on the ones that we give it. Only work on the data and the problems that we give it. Just like our human children, for machine learning, we need to be good parents. It's a critical responsibility. We need to give it the goals and the guidelines to be socially aligned. Otherwise, they might be baby monsters. And I'm not just talking about commerce on steroids. In 2016, our elections were manipulated by bad actors using big data and complex technology. And it's not just the problems these machines solve. There's also bias in the data. When a limited group of people program these things with a limited bit of data, they can be biased because humans are biased. I envision a better world where these machines make a more compassionate world for all living things. And I'm going to invite you to get involved. My mom calls me a robot doctor. Now that's because in the 90s I did PhD in human-robot collaboration. I built and I studied human-robot systems. And since then I've been working at the forefront of human-centered technology. And I've seen machine learning increase in potential. And I think that's wonderful. I've also seen an increase in misconceptions about what it can and can't do. There's been myths and fear-mongering. It's not what you see in Westworld, and it's not about the Terminator coming to get you. I am not worried about superintelligence out of control. I am worried about super-amplified manipulation. Now, here's what I'm talking about. People manipulating our behavior using machine intelligence for their own goals. Right now, the people shaping these are hyper-competitive male engineers working for big tech. Often, their goal is profit. So these machines are being shaped with a limited worldview. We can do better. I remain optimistic about the opportunities for machine learning, and I am optimistic about helping you see those opportunities, too. So I'm going to give you some good examples. Fueled by big data, these puzzle solvers are making our world a better place. In healthcare, finding lung tumors and x-rays used to take months. And then it took weeks and days, now it takes seconds with machine learning. In the hands of your doctor, that can save your life. Same is true with other critical health tests, eye disease. 
If we could trust these machines with our health data collectively, if we could find a way to do that, these machines are starting to predict health outcomes. Possibly catching a chronic disease before it happens. That could relieve the suffering of a lot of people. Systemically, we might catch chronic disease before they happen, and we might radically reduce costs, fundamentally changing our healthcare system. That would make healthcare more accessible and more affordable for more people. It's awesome, right? Now, in our schools, machine learning has the possibility of personalized learning. On our roads, autonomous transportation can save tens of thousands of lives a year. In our businesses, machine learning is getting good at fraud detection. And that, like in a business like insurance, could reduce the cost for everyone. Why? Because, like the puzzle with a million pieces, these patterns are buried so deep in the data, humans haven't found them yet. But machines do in fractions of a second. They have the potential to make a better world, but they can't do it by themselves. Now, at this point, you might be saying, well, what does that have to do with me sitting here? Well, what this has to do with you is the next wave of breakthroughs in machine learning is going to be about bringing professionals into the field. What we in artificial intelligence call domain experts or subject matter experts. These are professionals like teachers or doctors or nurses or lawyers or business people or sales associates or realtors, anyone who's solving a puzzle in a specific field. Why? Because you as a professional, you know what the important problems are. You know what the success criteria is. Machines can solve those puzzles, but they need you to guide them. And the engineers need you too, because they don't know about your profession, they don't know what the important problems are, and they can't get it by reading a textbook which is likely to be 10 or 20 years out of date. So here's the thing. I work with a lot of clients in every industry looking for opportunities for automation. And here's a question for you to make your life better, because that's what machine learning can do. Think about what problem are you solving every day that bogs you down? What information puzzle, if you could solve it a million times better or faster, would make you more effective? The answer to that question could be our next breakthrough in automation. So, here's the promise. If we do this, and we do it right, we bring our deepest, highest, most diverse human selves to this problem. We can make the world more wonderful. I'm the father of a red-haired, strong-willed, nine-year-old girl named Beatrix. I love her with all my heart. I want to give her a world with increasing possibilities, a world where compassion, creativity, and curiosity are rewarded. Here's the bigger promise. These machines have the potential to unburden our hands of repetitive tasks. Now that can free up our hearts and our minds to solve the bigger challenges that are facing us today and tomorrow. Thank you.